Hi, this is Dr. Gabby Cora, and welcome to my show, Dr. Gabby's Take, Make Life Interesting. And, and this speaks to how much of the stigma still exists mm -hmm. among people. It's kind of easier to say, wow, they may be dangerous because they're acting weird. Whereas, in fact, they may be, like you were mentioning mm -hmm. before, they, they may be more of the victims right. of other people who will hit them. Like right. we know people have hit homeless people right. who were not doing well, anything well, they may to live in an ALF with other people with mental illness and there's a problem. I mean, it just, it's tough. So, and it, it's cool. I mean, and... and you know, you see them, and the best is when they come back after they're treated. And sometimes it's like someone has flipped a switch in their brain, and they've come back, and they've gone back to work, and they're in recovery. I trained in the D.C. area, in, uh, at St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Mm -hmm. We did have community centers mm -hmm. there, and we had different levels of, of, um, of care. Interestingly, we were also the dump of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, even the VAs, whenever sure. they did not want any patient or they couldn't treat anyone, mm -hmm. or even the other hospitals around, whether it was GW or Georgetown, they would send those people sure. to us. One of my most difficult patients was also a vet with uh, bipolar illness and PTSD, wow. extremely violent. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually was hunting to kill me. And it wasn't until months later that we finally got his medications okay and he mm -hmm. got to be okay that he approached me and said, you know, I realize that you were trying to help me, mm -hmm. but this is now. Before, right. I really wanted to kill you and you should have taken better care of yourself because I could have. Yeah. What was interesting in that situation was that as much as he was a vet and he was trying to kill me, we also had another vet who was a nurse. And because he realized I was under fire mm -hmm. in a way, he would always watch my back. Yeah. Wow. So it is interesting to see mm -hmm. that that was probably one of the hardest patients that I've ever had. I, I was really trying to help mm -hmm. him, and thank goodness he realized about that, but he couldn't tell. At the no. time that he was so upset, so ill, um, there were two weeks in which he was awake, Mm. screaming out loud and violent, straight. 24 hours a day. 24 right? hours a day, day yeah. and night, no sleep. Mm. And, and sometimes you wonder, wow, does that even exist? And you're mm. like, yes. And, and, and you can tell the difference when, when you are able to stabilize mm. someone yeah. that they don't mean it. And, and that's one of the saddest part of the illness. There's no insight. And, and one of the problems that we see is when they go off their medication, a lot of them don't realize they've gotten sick again. We're the crazy ones at that point. And, and it makes it so much more difficult. And that's why I really think that we need to take a good hard look at our commitment laws. And my sense is we need to study it a lot more and see how effective or ineffective they really are today. We know just in Florida through a study I saw, if you're Baker Act more than twice a year, there's a 90% chance you're going to get arrested. I mean, the system is not really doing what it was intended to do, and I, I think what people need to understand is these are like heart attacks of the brain, and, and they're silent heart attacks. They don't feel it, and, and they feel fine, <laughs> and they're acting out, and they have to then come to a court for the court to decide if they should be treated. Now, if you had a heart attack, no one would ask you if you want to get treated. They would rush you to a hospital. They would do everything they can to resuscitate you. And then if you want to go back eating like a jerk later, that's your choice. But with mental illness, we don't do that. And, and there also seems to be some growing research, and I don't think it's definitive yet, but the longer we take to get someone stable, the greater possibility there may be some permanent damage. And so our system is really a mess. And so some people who are going through it again and again are getting really bad brain damage from this. And then it becomes even more difficult um, to get them serviced. And you know, I tell people there's nothing civil or right about letting somebody live under a dumpster and eat garbage and, and, and say that's a civil right. 
So I, I really think we need to take some new looks at this. Um, I'm not into rehospitalizing, reinstitutionalizing right. people, but I think we have to stop looking at a psychiatric hospital as a bad thing. It, it, they're not what they were 50 years ago. And if you need to go, if you, if you, God forbid, have cancer, heart disease, and it gets worse, you go to a hospital and get a higher level of care. Or to a rehab center right. or to a Correct. hospice. Or That's right. And if your mental illness gets worse, you need a tune-up, too, and you may need to get the higher level of service, not for long-term institutionalization, but just to get you stable again. Mm -hmm. And then back out into the community. And we're not there yet. We still have this extreme system, which is very expensive, and it doesn't really work very well.